gonna be for entertainment purposes only, like all of my videos. And I'm gonna take you through how my rotary phase converter works from the wall to the phase converter to the transformer. I'm gonna take you through every step of the way. Now, if I wasn't clear, this is not a how-to video because I am not an electrician and I don't, I don't want you dying or burning your shop down because you copied me. And let's get started here. I'm gonna take you through where the panel is. I'm gonna show you all of the stuff and we're gonna go through the whole process. So a pretty standard panel here. I've got power coming up through the floor into the 100 amp main breaker. And then off there, it branches like a standard one and goes into your individual breakers. This is a 30 amp breaker that I have into this system. And then from this system here, it runs up through these armored cable cords and down across the shop and to down over side. to this box over here. So the power comes down through here and into this plug. And I strongly feel that I need a plug to plug this system in so that it's a separate system. At some point, if I wanna take this appliance and go to another shop or somewhere else, I can easily take all this stuff off the wall. And all I have to do is have an electrician come and put this plug in and then I'm off to the races. So once we plug this in here, this is gonna go up to the rotary phase converter. At this point, it's just 220 power that's being created at this plug here, right? And then it's gonna travel all the way up into the box. And this is where the 220 or 240 volt come in. And then it hooks to a ground here. And this is our leg one and leg two. As shown on the diagram. Now, if you take a closer look at the diagram, L1 and L2 are input and output. And they're controlled by the internal control. And then it goes out to the idler, which goes out here. Then it's gonna make its way down this wire here, all the way down to the motor. And this L1 and L2, which are also black and red, go down here and are hot wires. The capacitor will also send some power down through that blue wire until that motor starts spinning up to speed. Then the capacitors will kick out and this will turn into a generator. And this is what's gonna generate our third leg. And it'll go all the way back up into the box here. <laughs> I hope you're kind of grasping this so far. There's a lot of wires, but don't be intimidated. Then. It's just gonna go down this blue wire and then it's gonna go out here. I'm sure you've probably noticed that there's a red and a black wire put onto the same insulator. Now, let me explain why that was and the purpose of why that switched around. You see, originally when I wired this all up, the rotary phase converter was going backwards, hence the lathe was going backwards. So now that we follow this blue wire down, we're gonna follow this blue wire where the blue wire is actually going out. This is the power that's created by the rotary phase converter. And now are you following with me here? <laughs> Let's take a close look at this here. So this power is gonna double check here because we don't wanna fuck this up. This power is coming in here to these wires here. I've got a black wire here that goes up to its branch. I've got a red wire that comes up to this branch here. I've got my white white, which is also touching blue, that come to here. Now it's just a change in color because of the types of wire that I use. But basically I'm, count I'm counting on blue and white being the exact same in this setup. And then I've got my earth here, my ground, which once again is super important as well, down here. Now, special note here, if this system wasn't locked out and there was power to this whole system right now, this is all live, so I could, I, could, I could die a very fiery death. So I'm sure you're picking up on this here that there's a lot of shit that could go wrong on it, pardon my language. But I just wanna emphasize the fact that a lot of stuff here is super dangerous. So you gotta be really, really careful with this stuff if you're looking at it. Now, the purpose of this splitter box here is that I've got two transformers that are down here. Now, we're gonna get into these transformers here in a second in a second, but I'm just gonna explain this here first. This splitter box here has little insulators that are insulating in behind here. Basically this big metal box here is just a shroud holding a bunch of insulators that are tying off a bunch of wires together. It's kind of like, but not the same. You put like morettes on like smaller wires on a 110 house. It's kind of the same idea, but a lot more big scale and a lot more industrial. So this is the way apparently I was told that it's supposed to be now, done. This splitter box is probably way bigger than what I needed, but I think this box is the only one that I could get at the time because of supply chain issues. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with this big box. So down here I have 
because I think it's for my shop, I think it's really important to have some lights to see, to, to troubleshoot stuff right away if something's gonna go wrong. Each leg of this right now is still 110, each leg is, right? So since it's still 110, I've got some simple lights that I got from Princess Auto, kind of like your tractor supply place if you're in the States. And I've got, I've got two oranges, which signify the two regular phases that are coming in. And then I've got a green. So when that third leg's generated, I can see it on this panel here. And I know that I've got that third leg generated. Makes for super easy troubleshooting. Then each one of these wires here, which go down to my transformers that are down here, like we said, they're split off of here and they're gonna work their way down. So we have black to black, red to red, white and blue together, because that's just what we're doing in this shop. Not to code, but it's what we're doing. And then we've got our all important green down here. Now, if I hadn't said already, if, <laughs> if I hadn't said already in a perfect absolute world, which we're not in, you wouldn't need that earth because there's some science behind how three phase works and it creates these even phases and they all balance themselves out if you do it perfect. But this is a phase converter, which is creating its own kind of power and its own generation. So it's not a balanced system as well as it could be. So super duper important here to have this and have everything super grounded. So you, so, so once again, you don't die a fiery death. <laughs> so let's come down here. We'll follow these cords. So each of these cords come down into here and they're going on the inside of the transformer. So this one's the inside of the transformer and one of those two, we'll look in a second here to see which one it is, goes into here from the splitter box. Let's crawl inside because I've got to do a little bit of a repair here on this here. This wasn't installed correctly and the wire's kind of bent over to the side and we don't need, <laughs> we don't need big three phase power touching things that it shouldn't. So we don't die a fiery death once again, right? So let's have a look here. I'm going to fix this while you're here with me and then we'll get it back up and running. And I'll explain to you while I'm on the inside how this transformer is hooked up. And I'll give you a really rough idea how it works as well. So down in the notes below, I'm also gonna put some links to other YouTubers who explain transformers kind of a little bit comprehensively so that you can understand it a little bit better. But just know this, there's amperage and voltage change. I believe whenever you change your voltage and your voltage goes up, your amperage is gonna go down. This is important to know because if you have the wrong wire size, it's gonna cause a problem with too much amps going through a small wire. So up on the inside of the transformer here, we have our green wire that's going over to ground over here that's grounded on the whole, that's grounded on the whole unit. Hold onto these wires here so it makes a little bit more sense. This once again is the wire coming in right here. And then I've got this white one here coming up to X3. Oh, I've got, this red one coming up to X1. And then I imagine X2 here as well is the other side that this one's running into on the, on the inside of everything. Now, if you were to wire this up backwards, it would create power in a way, in a way that you wouldn't want actually, because it's gonna step it down even further, which also would increase your amps. But that's a whole like, that's a whole like different lesson where you need to talk to an electrician. About. Now, from this transformer here, it's gonna go on the inside of one of these coils or on the outside of one of the coils. I'm not exactly sure on how that works. And then it's gonna step up your power to 600 volts from your, from your 240 volts or whatever it was. And then we have these wires here. It's gonna come up to the box that's up here. And we'll get to this in a second here on this box and that box over there. But we'll get to that in a second here because I gotta do this quick repair. I always love super easy fun repairs like this <laughs> because if you notice down there in the bottom left corner, it wasn't quite right and it was gonna end up fraying that wire. And this repair is super easy. I took a photo before <laughs> or a video and then I just have to remove everything and pull it all out of the box and then throw a new connector on. Now, <laughs> full disclaimer, I had a different connector and I thought it was gonna work and I drilled the hole a little bit bigger. So I had to cap it over to make sure it was to code. <laughs> Then I double, triple, quadruple check to make sure I wasn't drilling in on the back side of this transformer or wrecking anything. And then I just popped another hole through so I could fit this fitting in through there. So the purpose of this connector here is to not only stop the wires from getting cut by the sheet metal, but also to stop someone from mildly pulling on it and then end up pulling some of the wires out from the inside. Also, a quick side note as well, if you were to actually cut one of these wires into the copper, it's going to create a hot spot in there and the wire is actually going to need to be replaced so that you don't have a fire. 
Now, it's just a matter of making sure I back everything way, way off because it was just crushing the wire and I had to pull it out. And then kind of giving a little bit of a spin and putting it in and we're ready to rain. Let's follow the out wire and see where it goes. Okay, that repair went pretty smooth and and it worked out quite well. It, it, was, uh, it was a long time coming to do that there. So let's follow this wire up here. It goes up and over top over here and over to this disconnect. Let's open up the disconnect and have a look inside. So as I said, it comes in the top here, but before we open this up, let's have a look here. This is a 600 volt AC 30 amp three pole breaker box or disconnect, pardon me. And on the inside, the important part about this is, is it again has fuses that are super important here. Now each fuse protects each leg. So this one's for the black, red, and the white. Now, as you follow the lines that come down in through here, you've got three lines that come up here and they're connected to each line throughout here. All of this stuff here is insulated from this metal box as well, except for one thing here, this green wire. Now, this green wire here in my shop, I have it linked to the actual box and then it's linked to this one here as well. Keep in mind, anytime I'm in this box, all of this stuff here is live. If that was to be plugged in, I could get electrocuted by any of these. If I push this up, and that switch this breaker here throws over there, it allows energy to go through here and down to my cords, creating this side to be live as well. Another important thing to look at here is each one of these are protected by individual fuses. So let me take this out here for you so you can see. I have a seven and a half amp fuse per leg on this. Next, you're gonna see these one set of wires here is gonna go down here and it's gonna go up into the lathe that's over here. And this is a 600 volt lathe. Then the second set of wires that are over here are going to come down here into this plug that I have over here. The reason I have this plug separate is for the surface grinder that's over there. This here is a safety switch that should never be, never be bypassed like I'm doing here. And it's the purpose of that is so that when you open the door, you can't throw the main breaker on because when these fuses pop during power, they can actually throw shrapnel or sometimes do really weird stuff and throw a voltage out and electrocute you. So that's why that you have this safety that's up in here. So for the purpose of this demonstration, so for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just gonna show you how this works. So you see when I threw this up here, automatically it clicked and it had everything go together all at once. And then when I throw this down, turn it off, automatically it kicks it off again. This is super important <laughs> so you don't have it arcing in between. Because if you did it super slow, you could actually kind of see how it would like throw an arc between the two. So quick on, quick off. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. This was a really fun video. And I'm pretty sure by now you figured out there's a lot of moving parts to putting all of this transformer and rotary face converter together. And there's a lot of tools that I haven't gone over with you that I use to put mine in. So I highly recommend if you're thinking of doing this, I personally talked to an industrial electrician, a friend of mine that lives down the road and he, he helped me out quite a bit, but I don't recommend that the regular guy goes out and does the same thing that I'm doing here. Talk to an electrician, maybe gather up all the parts that they recommend that you put in and then have them put that in for you. But today's video was about having you a better understanding of how to do all this. And hey, while you're here, if you could hit the like button on this video or you have any comments to make, good, bad, the ugly, I'd like to hear it all. We'll catch you on the next one.